Good morning, everyone. This is Chuck, K0XM, and I wanted to produce a video today that will help everybody with a lot of headaches. How do you install the Anytone ATD868UV software on your computer? Well, in order to do that, you have to go get the actual software, and you need to find out which version of firmware your radio is running. You can do that by accessing it via the menu on your radio, and I'll show you that now. All right, hi folks. Here we are going to get into my radio, and I'm going to show you how to find out what version of firmware your Anytone is running. So, with the radio powered up, of course, I've got my screen turned off after about 30 seconds. You hit the green button. That'll activate the radio. Then you hit it again. You pull in the menu, the main menu. You scroll down to settings. Hit the select button again. Scroll down to device info. Hit the select button one more time. Then scroll down and you'll see firmware version. Mine is running 2.30. So I have to run the 1.30 CPS. That's how you find the firmware. Okay, so knowing that, uh, seeing how we know what version of firmware is on the radio now, we need to go to the support page at bridgecomsystems.com. Now, I made some changes in the last 24 hours, and this is August 2nd, so there is a separate Anytone support page now, and you don't have to hunt and peck if you go find it. It's right at the top. So, you can come over here and do your Anytone support page for the click on that, and then there's two steps to getting the software. Number one... I ask you to download the individual USB drivers file by itself. So I'm going to download these and I'm going to save them to my to my desktop. So I'll download this. I'm going to save it to my desktop and we'll go from that and close that window out. And then I've, since my radio is at 1.30, as you saw in the video, the little short blurb, I'm going to download the 1.30 CPS. Now, remember, the last two numbers on the, the firmware and the CPS must match or things don't play well in the sandbox. So I'm going to download this file. Once again, I'm going to save that to my desktop. And it should be done doing that here shortly. And it is done. So let's go over to our, let's minimize this window, go over to our desktop where we're going to do all the rest of our work. So I extract my firmware or software first or second, it doesn't matter. I extract it and I extract it to the same location that you downloaded it to. It makes it a lot easier to find it. Now, Windows Windows will normally handle a normal zip file. That's not a problem. If you have anything else extracting Windows uh, zip files, like uh, a oddball program that hardly anybody uses, it could corrupt the file. I suggest using Windows Explorer to extract these files. Okay, so that extraction is complete, as you can see there. So I'm going to minimize that window. I'm going to close that one. Then I'm going to go over here to where I downloaded the GD Virtual Com driver zip. That's my USB driver. That is the key. And I'm going to extract all. So I'm going to extract these files. Now, at this point in time, we need to know one thing, besides the fact that you're either on Windows 7 or 10. So I'm going to minimize that window again. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to right click on the start button. I'm going to go to settings. It's going to pull up my settings window for my computer. It's going to go, I'm going to go to the systems tab. And then I'm going to go down here to about. Now, when you go to about, it's going to show you all kinds of information on your computer. Number one, the key that we're looking for is the 64-bit operating system there under system type. That tells me I need to put in a 64-bit driver. If it says 32, then you put in the 32-bit driver. So knowing that, I'm going to close that window out. I'm going to go back to my virtual com driver folder. You'll notice there's two folders, 64 and 386. x86 is for 32-bit systems. x64 is for the 64-bit systems. So I open up the x64. I right click on that execute file and I run it as administrator. Click yes to accept it. Thank Windows for all these little jumpers that you have to go through. Okay, and then you'll ask for either install, uninstall, or cancel. Now I have it installed already and I'm not sure what this window will pop up when I hit install, so let's find out. It'll tell me the driver's been installed. So that at that point, then your driver is installed properly. So I have by chance a radio plugged in to the computer 
let me go over to the settings screen and I'll show you what it looks like under device manager once the driver is installed properly. Fire up device manager, right click on the start button or the windows icon at the lower left and it'll pull up device manager option. Device manager will pop up. It's pulling my system. I have a lot on my system, folks. Okay, you go to ports. You see how it says virtual 32 virtual com port, port com six. There is, if it has a little yellow triangle with an exclamation point, it did not install properly. At that point, you want to right click, uninstall the device, and install uninstall the software, and then try it again. In this case, we've installed it properly. Now, we go back to installing the software. So, I have to go back to my desktop folder, and I go to the folder for the actual CPS. Now, these files here are for a firmware update. Do not worry about those. And this is the other, oh, the newer COM port driver that has been causing people headaches. Do not use that. So basically, you can delete those files or ignore them. I'm going to delete them just so you see what all we need to be playing with. This is the only one we need to worry about. This is the 868 UVE setup 1.3. That's my CPS. I right click on it, I run as administrator, and it's gonna ask me what to do. Windows is gonna bark about it because it doesn't know what it is. Hit the more info button and hit run anyway. It's a good file, folks. It's not virus. This window will up for the administrator control. You wanna hit yes. And then we'll go into the setup program. Then you hit next. Now notice here, this is set up for D. 99.9% .9 of you guys want it on drive C. So you have to change that. And you go next. I've already had, I just re uninstalled it and I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall to that folder. Then it pulls up the file name. And I do wanna create a desktop icon because I want it easily accessible. I hit next and I install. And I'm going to hit launch. Now, when you hit launch, it's going to come up with this little window. To hit the checkbox and just hit OK. Uh, that was a special application. We really, other a lot of people haven't figured out why they've done that yet. So here's our default window. The first thing we want to do is we want to go to this icon right here, click it, and select the COM port. Even if it's showing up, always scroll down and select it, okay, and then hit OK. You have to do that every time you want to read and write to the, to the radio. Then we come up back up here to this window. We hit read from radio. Now, I'm just going to read the other data because I've got the entire contact list in, and it's going to take a while, and that's 104,000 contacts at this time. So we're just going to read the meat and bones of the radio programming. Once you get this bar, that tells you that it's talking. And that's it, folks. Read data completed. You're good to play with the radio now. Any questions, don't hesitate to call 816-532-8451. Check out our YouTube channel. Check out our support page, uh, bridgecomsystems.com. This is Chuck, K0XM73. Call with any questions. Thanks.